Hi everyone, welcome to day seven of SLC's Lockdown Countdown and welcome Mr Chris Lee. And welcome Jill Sodicar. <laughs> What a privilege to have you here. Now, Chris Lee is a man of many hats, probably most well known for his position um, with Thailand here in the UK market, but he also wears an Orlando hat, uh, Papua New Guinea and Northern Territory. So looking after trade marketing and PR across many different destinations, as well as being the treasurer of Parta. How do you find the time, Chris? <laughs> Oh, it's quite easy, really. <laughs> Everybody else does all the work, is the key. Really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for um, coming on board today. I'm going to go straight in with question number one, which is, um, obviously, this has been a year where everyone has had to adapt. Tell me, how have you adapted? Well, yes, it's obviously the big question to start off with. I suppose, like everybody else, um, the big adaption, if that's the right word, um, <laughs> for me, has been... You know, I was used to traveling. I was used to traveling abroad a lot. I reckon about three months of the year I was abroad mm -hmm. and also traveling a lot around the UK and even my commute in to London um, yes. every day was about an hour and a half. So to go from that to no traveling, like literally no traveling, mm -hmm. has been the biggest thing I suppose I've had to adapt to personally. And uh, the same for, for all my staff and colleagues as well. So um, how we've adapted in that way, I think is probably the, the biggest thing. And I think what's come out of that is because I'm a very tactile person and I really sort of miss the, the hugs and the uh, and sort of being in front of somebody. But in that place, I suppose there's never been a more important to almost over communicate. So yeah. I suppose what we've tried to do is to communicate even more, whether it by, by Zoom or WhatsApp or Line or Skype or or phone or whatever it is, and good old phone as well. I've enjoyed a few phone calls. Yeah. I think I've tried to communicate perhaps even more than I would have done before. Um, so that's, I suppose, been one big thing. And the, the other thing I have to mention, I suppose, is that um, I decided to uh, take the opportunity to try and um, reshape. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, good for you. Because um, to be honest with you, uh, just before the first lockdown in March, um, there was uh, rumours of Japanese trawlers going uh, down the coast um, because I'd grown so large, um, I was whale-like. Um, so uh, I decided to commit to a, a programme of fitness and um, and 14 kilos lighter now. Wow. Uh, and um, I'm hardly gaunt, but um, 14 kilos lighter and enjoying lots and lots of running and, uh, and a healthier life. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. And what a positive outcome to have come from this this difficult year. So I really commend you for that because it wasn't easy to find the motivation in, in the first lockdown. Um, everyone's been adapting. What other innovations across the industry have caught your eye? It doesn't have to be um, travel, could be a, a different pillar. I did really love, um, particularly in the first lockdown, a lot of that sort of social media um, platforms um, of doing things from home. You know, like we all became a nation of bakers online. It was like there was seemed to be everybody was baking bread or um, and then together with that was all the um, obviously there was fitness stuff. So whether it be Joe Wicks uh, or, you know, with Thailand, we did one called um, stay, stay at Home, Stay Safe. And it was all about, you know, exercising from home and all the things that you need to do. And um, I've really enjoyed that as well. So I think. That sort of, again, it, it goes back to what I said before, and it's about how people have sort of used innovative ways to to communicate with each other in the absence of that, that warm hug. Yes, absolutely. And I know there's going to be uh, friends and family all around the world you're missing. I think I know the answer to this question before I ask it. If the borders were open and you could go anywhere tomorrow, where would you go and why? Yes, it's Thailand. <laughs> it's Thailand, of course. Um, sadly, I... I I last saw my husband back in February, um, so we were supposed to then come back to the UK. I came back, um, but he stayed in Thailand and um, haven't been able to see him since. So um, slightly, completely desperate to to go over there and see him. So I'm hoping to fly over um, in uh, in December. Of course, uh, Thailand is one of the few countries that has given us a glimmer of hope of, of opening the borders. What's the latest on that? So, so you can apply for a couple of different visas now. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, you can apply for an OA visa, which is an old age visa. No laughing, Jill. 
Um, that allows you to go over and stay for up to a year, uh, multiple entries, um, but there is this quarantine period. So there's still a quarantine period of 14 days. So really the only tourists we're going to be attracting um, are people who are prepared to stay quite a long time yeah. um, because if you're going to quarantine for 14 days then obviously you want to stay a lot longer than that to make it worth your while so yeah. Well I will keep everything crossed that you make that reunion this side of Christmas. Ah. Uh, Chris Lee what a pleasure thank you so much for joining me and wishing you all the best for the rest of this year. Love you lots Jill thanks. Cheers. Take care bye.